Hey guys, um, this is Pradeep and this is one of the videos uh, for seleniumframework.com. Um, in this video we are going to talk a little bit about um, the page navigation, right? So, so far we discussed about page object model and we discussed about page factory and uh, we mentioned that, you know, modeling a page object is an extremely important um, uh, concept which we cannot afford to miss. So, uh, continuing on that discussion, um, you know, we mentioned that we can model a web page on an application. Uh, on one extreme, we can model the entire uh, HTML source of the page as one page object, right? And all HTML elements being part, um, the members of the page object. Or we can go ahead and, you know, um, uh, represent every HTML element as a page object in itself. Now, both both extremes are not good. We need to identify the sweet spot in, in you know, in between both the extremities. Um, so what is a sweet spot and how do we identify that? And what is a guideline for identifying the sweet spot? Again, um, it is the, it should, the page object should capture the state and the behavior of the application, right? The entire automation framework what we are talking about should always model the application state and behavior. So page object modeling also should be aligned with that goal and overall concept. So uh, um, let's let's see, you know, uh, what are the situations um, especially where uh, we need to consider when we model a page object, right? Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's take, let me open up the paint, okay, and then let's see. So, you know, in general, a web application, right? Um, let's say, you know, I have a, uh, you know, a, I load the home page, right? Um, let's say automationpractice.com, right? That's that's the website we have been using um, so far. It's a e-commerce website, so it's a good candidate for us, right? When we open automationpractice.com, we are on the home page, right? Once we are on the home page, um, you know, uh, if we click, let's say, sign in button, then that transitions into a sign-in page, right? And then we do a bunch of operations from there. Let's say if we click contact us, then, you know, we end up in a contact us page, right? So if you think about it, the overall web application is a network of pages, right? A network of pages and there is a state transition, right? From based on um, at any current point, you are on a certain page. Right? So, the application state keeps changing, correct? Now, you know, we have definitely uh, represented uh, a page object with the home page and we said, you know, let's um, make sign-in as a member of the home, home page um, in the Ruby class what we define. Then contact us as a home page, right? Now, once we click this, obviously we are going into a new page. This is fine you know, um, as long as it is a synchronous web application, meaning the application state is um, changing as we hop from page to page, correct? From home page to sign in page, then um, you know, home page to contact us page, maybe contact us page to submit page, whatever. So we keep hopping between the web pages. And you know, in a synchronous web application, this is all fine. But what about asynchronous web applications? So let's let's talk about what is an asynchronous web application, right? So let me clear this. So in an asynchronous web application, what happens is, let's say you know, this is a home page, right? And this is a hypothetical example. On the home page itself, I have parts of the page, right? These parts of the page get refreshed individually without the whole page refreshing, right? So based on some operation, right, only this, this page will get, this, uh, this part of the page would get refreshed uh, based on some event. Similarly, this will get refreshed, right, based on some operation. Now let's say if I had represented home page as you know class home page 
and then um, let's say there is an element 1 here and there is an element 2 and let's say I have defined these elements right element 1 and element 2 and then you know um, my my page also has let's say element 0 so, okay so element 0 now as soon as I um, in my step definitions right in my step definitions whenever I say on home page right that means all of these elements get initialized so whatever is the state of the application at the point when I do on home page right element 0 element 1 element 2 all of them get initialized okay this is good now let's say I perform this operation on this part of the page and element 1 gets changed to something because only this part of the page is refreshed so element 1 becomes let's say element 1 underscore 1 because now its text changed or something happened because of this Ajax call right because of this Ajax call something changed on this so now if I used on home page right and I try to access element 1 this would result in a stale element exception okay and this is a common issue you would see um, in your selenium test when uh, you're working on an um, Ajax application right so this is an asynchronous behavior so how would you model your page object to align with this behavior right the way you should model okay so let me delete this the way you should model whenever you have you know let's say this is, this is your page and let's say this part is Ajax okay I'm, I'm just calling you know Ajax 1 for lack of a better word and you know this part is Ajax 2 right and this has um, you know element 1 this has element 2 and you know rest of the um, elements on the page have uh, 3 4 and so on okay so the way you should model this is you would say class home page right and as we have defined page objects so far you would go ahead and you know um, have uh, uh, you know you'll, you'll define the properties right of the page as this this is fine but this parts since you do not know the state of it and the state of this keeps changing you should go ahead and define it under a separate method okay let's say element one and um, uh, you know then define element 2 right? and these methods right are methods of the page what should they return they should return browser dot and then however you um, identify this element at that point in time so in your step definition right in your step definition this block of code definition element one and n will get called only when you know when you need it so you'll say on home page dot element one and at that time the selenium web driver will go and execute this piece of code where it will find an element at that point in time which represents the current state of the DOM and then it will return the web element and then you can go and perform the um, you know operation whatever you want to perform this is different from the rest of these elements right these elements since um, you know they um, we define them as uh, instance variables right we said and we return them if you look at the previous page objects we define them as instance elements and we had uh, the uh, you know as soon as in the initialize right in the constructor initialize whenever this page gets initialized we were returning these elements but now we won't return these element 1 and element 2 in initialization right we would just declare them as methods and then we will return them only when needed and at the point when we know the state of it okay so once again I'm going to repeat this because um, this is a important concept on how you model a page object right so if you have uh, Ajax elements right let's say Ajax 1, Ajax 2 and then um, normal 1 
normal to I'm just you know representing these elements like this then the way you will define the elements is under the class right in the initialize in the initialize you would definitely return normal one and normal two elements okay but you would have separate methods for Ajax 1 and Ajax 2 right and you will return the element under Ajax 1 or Ajax 2 only when it is called okay only when it is called in the step definition okay pardon my um, you know handwriting um, but uh, you know I'm pretty sure uh, my audio should uh, help identify the the uh, you know scratch pad anyways so um, once again to repeat if we have Ajax elements we shouldn't be initializing them as part of constructor we should be having separate methods and we should call them only when needed because we need them at the point when uh, when we are interacting with that element okay so uh, this this is a very important concept especially because when we you know navigate between pages the state of the application meaning the DOM keeps changing and so if we have to align with the DOM we would need right we would need to model the page objects in the right way and this is an important concept on how to model the page objects if we do not model it like this then we are going to have large number of flaky tests which keep failing and we will um, you know most likely have stale element okay stale element exceptions all the time okay all right guys um, that is it for for this video um, thank you very much